What's going on everyone? Matthew Osborne here. I hope you guys all had a great Christmas. I wanted to send out this video real fast before the end of the year and I wanted to recommend to you guys five books that have really helped me that I think are not commonly or as commonly recommended. These are books that have really helped me in business and my personal life this past year or ones that I'm reading right now that are really helping me and so I wanted to share these with you in case instead of just selling books on Amazon, you guys wanted to read some of them. I know a lot of people, especially myself, like to read more at the beginning of the year. It's a fresh start. It inspires us to learn more, which is a good thing. So if you're trying to take advantage of that energy you have right now going into the new year, here are five books that will hopefully help you as much as they have helped me. I'm going to show you the pages on my computer right here because even though I love these books, I only own two of them in the actual hard copy. The other three I have digital versions of because I like audiobooks and reading on flights and stuff like that, not taking physical books with me all over the place. So two of them I have here, but I'm gonna show you the pictures on the screen. So real fast, it's not gonna take very long. I'll show you the five and the reasons why I like them. First one is called The 1% Rule by Tommy Baker, How to Fall in Love with the Process and Achieve Your Wildest Dreams. This is an amazing book if you're anything like me where you have giant ambitions but you're not extremely organized and you gotta figure out how to make those ambitions actually into reality. Everyone has big dreams and big ideas, but they're worthless unless you figure out a system to put them into action. The 1% rule helps you get organized, helps you define more clearly what your goals actually are, and then how to make a system daily on how you can actually achieve those goals. So 1% rule is great if you've got big dreams, but you're not quite as organized as others might be. Uh, the next book we have here is called Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Uh, Jordan Peterson, a lot of you guys have probably heard of him already. He's a great uh, psychologist. Um, and he goes into 12 rules that help you lead an ultimately more fulfilling life. And really what this book is centered around is not chasing happiness, uh, but chasing purpose and competence. And when we're competent and we feel like we have a purpose in life, that's what ultimately leads to fulfillment. And he talks about 12 ways that we can actionably add that to our life so we can be more fulfilled uh, as people. This is a bestseller, so a lot of you guys might have already read this one, but it is a somewhat newer book in the past couple of years. And I highly recommend this. It's not an easy weekend read by any means. I actually took a long time to read this book because it's so densely packed with information, but in a really, really good way. So get this book. Don't expect to read it all in one day. If you do, let me know because that's impressive. Um, but it is a great book, and I highly recommend all of you guys at least check out this one. The next one is one I read this year that I was not expecting to like near as much as I did. It's called The Daily Stoic, 366 Meditations on Wisdom perseverance and the art of living. I guess this is made for leap years because 366 days. Uh, so it's perfect for 2020 actually. Um, but 2020 was a leap year, right? I think it was. Anyway, so for those of you not familiar with stoicism in general, stoicism is basically learning to control what we can control and releasing what we have no control over. Uh, most of our life and most of the time we're thinking about and worrying about things that we absolutely have no control over. And worrying about something all the time that you have no control over doesn't only not help the situation, but it distracts you from things you can actually control. So stoicism is really about figuring out the things we have control over, focusing on that and learning to release and not worry about the things we can't control. Uh, this not only allows us to worry less and be happier people, but actually accomplish way more than we could if all of our time was spent uselessly worrying about and trying to fix things that were outside of our control. So I read this one page a day for this year. Uh, I know some people read it about front to back at one sitting. Uh, but I really like just that daily kind of reminder to start the day of different things where I could learn to focus on the things that were in my control and then learn how to kind of release those things that are outside of my control. So this was a surprising one for me this year that I really liked, but I highly recommend this one. The next one I'm in the middle of right now, or not the middle, I'm more towards the end of this book now. It's a long book, but it's called The Messy Middle. And this is uh, really caught my attention because he talks about a subject that's not as commonly talked about, but extremely important. And he talks about how most business books, they either talk about starting or they talk about the final results and the ultimate success of the business, where 99.9% .9 of the time, you're stuck in the messy middle of a business where you don't have the energy and enthusiasm of just getting started and you're nowhere near the finish line, whatever that might be for the business. And he talks about how to find motivation through the messy middle of your business and how to organize your team when it doesn't seem like much is getting done or how to reorganize things to actually move yourself forward and to how to gauge your progress when everything just seems like you're stuck at the same place, you've plateaued and nothing's really changing. So the messy middle is great for 99.9% .9 of you who are not just starting and you haven't finished, you're somewhere stuck in the middle, like he calls it the messy middle. So this is a really, really good book that I'm almost finished with that I recommend. 
Uh, and the last one here is a very popular one, but surprisingly, most people I recommend this to have not read this one yet. It's called Psycho Cybernetics. And this book is about uh, really the power of your subconscious mind and how it affects us in ways we don't think it does. This was made by a former plastic surgeon, I believe. And his kind of way about going about this was that he would do surgeries on people. Let's say he fixed their nose. He'd do the same type of surgery on two different people. One person would go away and would basically change their life. They felt good about themselves. Everything was better. The other person, not a single thing would change. Even though they've gotten rid of something they didn't like, they've made it perfectly the way they wanted it to. Their life wouldn't change. Their view of themselves wouldn't change. And he talks about how this really impacts people. So he studied different people. He went about this process in more of a scientific way to figure out how our subconscious mind really influences our actions and then what we can do about that uh, to better our chances of success. I think that was the fifth book. A sixth book, though, one that I'm also in the middle of right now, but I've really liked it so far, um, is called The Way of the Wolf. It's by The Wolf on Wall Street, Jordan Belfort. He has a really good podcast. Uh, he also has, of course, the popular movie that Leonardo DiCaprio was in called The Wolf on Wall Street. Anyways, he's a guy that was great at sales, um, and so he's showing his sales philosophy basically in this book. For those of you who don't think you're in sales, you have to sell all the time every single day, whether it's selling in a relationship or making a relationship better or selling to a potential customer. Uh, you have to sell yourself or sell items throughout your entire life, whether you think you do or not. And so learning the art of persuasion and the art of sales is a great thing, I think, for anyone to learn, uh, especially maybe you want to go out and land a library as a client for your Amazon business or you want to go out um, and make relationships with a thrift store and actually get backroom access, even things like that. That's all sales and it's learning how the psychology of sales works and how you can actually apply those in real life situations. I wasn't expecting again to like this book as much as I have so far, but he lays it out very well. I actually have the audio version of this where he does the audio voiceover of it and it makes it a little better when the author is actually reading it. You can tell their enthusiasm for it. So physical copy is great of this one, but I really recommend the audio book. Um, again, that's called The Way of the Wolf by Jordan Belfort. But those are six books for you guys. Hopefully, uh, a couple of those you have not read before, and you guys can pick those up, and hopefully they'll help you as much as they have helped me. I will see you guys uh, next year.